It's Kevin Slagle from Caltech. Uh, Kevin, please go ahead and share your screen. Uh, there we go. Okay, you should be able to hear me now. And it looks like you shared my screen for me. Uh, nobody is sharing. Do you see my now. screen? No. Okay, um, just a second. All right. Um, so thank you to the organizers for um, organizing this nice conference and, and giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, so I'm going to be talking about this recent paper from the summer, and then I'll briefly advertise this, this newer paper with Po Shen Shin. And if you like, you can download the slides at uh, this link, which will be at the bottom of every slide. So as most of you are familiar, there are kind of three classes of fractal models. Uh, one is the gapless fractal models, the U1 symmetric tensor gauge theories, which Michael Precto came up with. These are kind of like fractonic versions of electromagnetism where you also have dipole moment conservation. And there are also two classes of gapless or of gapped fractal models, the type one and type two phases. Uh, what distinguishes them is whether or not you have mobile particles. So the type one phases have planons and lineon particles, which can move along 2D planes or 1D lines, or they could also have fully mobile particles or strings. Well, the type two phases only have fractons. So none of the particles have any mobility. They're all fractons. And um, they tend to, you can create these fractons at corners of, of fractal shaped operators. So these are things like Haas code. In this talk, we're going to be focusing on trying to have a quantum field theory for the type one fracton models. Um, in particular, we're going to focus on the foliated type one fracton models where you have no fracton operators. And so a canonical example is the X cube model. And I'll emphasize that we want not just a field theory for some fracton model, we want kind of a nice field theory framework that encapsulates all these models in a very nice way. Um, so the kind of simplest type one fractal model that we'll realize and focus on is the X cube fractal model. Um, so here the qubits on links of a cubic lattice and you have these kind of operators. And this model is nice because it's gapped, exactly solvable, and it has a very large degeneracy on a torus that grows exponentially with system size. And the interesting part about it, or one of the interesting things, is the excitations and the mobility constraints. So if you act on the ground state with a rectangle of poly X operators, so you have this membrane of poly X operators, then you create four of these cube excitations at the four corners, and these excitations are fractons. Uh, you can't move them without creating additional excitations. And in the magnetic sector, there are these line on excitations acting with strings of Z operators, creates excitations at the end of the string, but also wherever this string bends. And that means that these excitations are line ons. If they try and go in a different direction, you end up creating additional excitations. And in this case, at this kink, we create these two excitations which is another line on which can move in the Z direction. Um, so those are just lattice details, which we won't really have to worry about for the rest of the talk. Um, in order to come up with a nice field theory description, the first thing we have to do is understand what is the space-time structure of these kinds of fractal models. And we figured this out in a previous work uh, with some of my collaborators. And we realized that the Space-time structure is given by one or more foliations of space-time. That is, space-time consists of um, some stack of layers, or actually possibly multiple stacks of layers. So the X-cube has three stacks of layers, so stacks of XY planes, XZ planes, and YZ planes. And these stacks of layers is basically what uh, specifies all the non-trivial fracton physics. For example, the planon particles are stuck to one layer. The linons are stuck to the intersection of two layers, while fractons are stuck to the intersection of three layers. You can also think about this as planons, linons, and fractons, 
being charged under one, two, or three layers. And then each layer has some charge conserved mod Z2, for example. And so that means the planon can't move off its layer without violating the charge for that layer. While a fracton can't move at all, else it would change the charge on one of the three layers. And this foliation also lets us understand things like the ground state degeneracy and the entanglement uh, quite naturally. So now that we've identified the space-time structure, in order to write down a field theory, now we have to figure out how to describe the structure in terms of some sort of uh, continuous field. So instead of using a, a metric that we usually use to describe space-time structure, um, since now instead of a Riemann geometry, now we have a foliation, so we're going to use a different kind of field, and we're going to use this one form uh, field, which I'll call a foliation field, uh, which is also used in the mathematical literature to describe foliations. And so we'll define the layers to be orthogonal to this one form, as kind of drawn here. And a consistency condition for this to make sense is we'll have to require that E is closed. Um, so it has zero curl. Good, so now we have um, this one form E to describe the foliation. And this will be non-dynamical, so it'll be just a static thing to describe the space-time structure. And as I mentioned, the X cube has three different foliations, so stacks of layers along three different directions. So we're going to add an index K to index the three different foliations. So for X cube model, K would be one, two, or three, but you could have any integer number of foliations in general, such as four for um, Shimon's model. And so for the X cube model, uh, we would just take uh, E to be a delta function. So K would be one, two, or three, and then mu would just be, um, or so this foliation field would be one if mu is equal to K, otherwise it'd be zero. And that would give uh, these three uh, foliation vectors that I've drawn here that just point in the X, Y, or Z direction to describe these three flat foliations. So that's the space-time structure of the X-cube model in terms of fields. And now we're ready to write down a field theory. So this will be uh, the foliated field theory, which can describe, for example, the X-cube model using certain coefficients of big N, little n, and big M. Uh, so this last term, it describes a 3 plus 1D BF theory by itself. So this little b is a two-form gauge field, while little a is a one-form gauge field. That means little b has two indices which are anti-symmetric, while little a has one. By itself, this last term, you can think about it as describing a 3D toric code. This first term, let's um, ignore this coupling for a little bit. It also looks like a BF theory. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we call this BF theory because um, the Lagrangian is B times uh, DA, but DA is just F. So it's basically B times F, so BF theory, the name. Um, so back to this first term, if we erase this part of it, we see it's again a BF theory kind of form. Um, but so this B is a one form, while A is a two form, but it's not just any two form, it's gonna be special. It'll be a foliated one plus one form gauge field. That is, it's a two form gauge field, but it will satisfy this constraint. So this is where this foliation field E will pop up. Um, so the wedge product of A wedge foliation field must be zero. And what this does is that makes this first term act like infinitesimally spaced stacks of two plus one DBF theory. So by itself, without this coupling, this first term actually describes a stacking of torque code layers. And then the sum here sums over multiple foliations. So it could be you know, one or more stackings of toric code layers. And there'll be uh, ZM uh, toric code layers. So not necessarily Z2. And now what this middle term does is it couples these 2D toric code layers to the 3D toric code layers to give you the non-trivial model. Uh, but what's really nice is that, um, so this term here, it's, you know, describes stacks of 2D layers, 
And so the platons are naturally encapsulated by this first term. Well, for example, this uh, field theory can also describe hybrid fractal models with mobile particles and mobile strings. And in that case, this last term naturally encapsulates those mobile particles. Um, good, so let me um, say a little bit about this strange new foliated gauge field. So it's going to act similar to an independent gauge field on each layer of a foliation. So let's consider a simple example of taking the foliation field to just be DZ. Um, then let's think about just a normal uh, gauge field on a 2 plus 1D layer, and you can expand its space-time components, and we'll get this. And now let's see what happens if we consider the foliation field in 3 plus 1D. Uh, so recall we have this constraint that A wedge E must be equal to 0. And that implies that if you expand this uh, 2 plus 1D gauge field, it must have only these three components. It must have this Z component and all of its um, terms so that we can get a 0 here where E is DZ. And note that this has the same number degrees of freedom as a 2 plus 1D gauge field. Um, so that's a good consistency check. And note this here on the right-hand side, A depends on T, X, Y, and Z. So the uh, Z component will be what describes which layer of the foliation um, this gauge field is describing. Um, so that's just um, um, kind of arguing why our intuition that this foliated gauge field describes a stack of 2 plus 1D gauge fields uh, makes sense. And it's also good to note that del Z, so if you consider something like the exterior derivative of dA, which appears in the Lagrangian, uh, the Z derivative will never appear when you expand dA. That's because due to the anti-symmetry of the exterior derivative, such terms will always disappear due to the dz that appears in big A. And that means, you know, big A is kind of independent on each layer of the foliation, uh, which makes its uh, field configurations discontinuous and gives rise to, for, to the um, UV-IR mixing. That is, uh, certain lattice scale details, such as these, um, you know, these foliating layers, shows up in the long distance physics, uh, which is desirable because it, it does. Um, good. Um, so now let's move on and see how we can think about the mobility constraints of the fractons and planons. So I like to think about this by coupling the Lagrangian to um, some uh, source terms. So we'll couple big A to big J and little a to little j. So big J will always describe a fracton, while little j uh, can describe fractons, lionons, or planons. Um, but if you have three foliations, it typically describes a fracton. Uh, so we'll think about that example where it describes a fracton for the X cube model. And so how does this work? So uh, we see this by implying or enforcing um, the gauge symmetry on this Lagrangian. So if we do a gauge transformation of little a, in order for this to be symmetric, we need to require that uh, dj, d of little j, is equal to zero. And physically, this implies that the fracton number is conserved. If we do a gauge transformation of big A, then we'll also have to transform little a like this. And this gives us a more interesting constraint. Uh, now we get this constraint here. Uh, so what does this mean? Um, so this last term here, it's non-zero whenever you have some current little j that goes through a layer. And then this first term is non-zero whenever you have a divergence of current big J. And so whenever you have current little j moving through a layer, that's... Or so what this is saying is that whenever some fracton little j tries to move through a layer, you have to create or destroy planon particles. And this is exactly consistent with the physics of the X cube model. You can move fractons, but only at the cost of creating additional planon excitations. 
Good. Um, so we see that we reproduce the basic physics of the X cube fractal models and other fractal models using this foliated Q of T, which looks like coupled BF theories. Uh, we describe the space-time structure using this foliation field little e uh, through a constraint on big A, a foliated one plus one form gauge field. And this little e just had to obey a constraint that had to be closed. And we saw that gauge invariance enforces the particle mobility constraints. I'd also like to advertise a very recent work uh, with Bo Shen Xin, um, who did most of the work. And in this work, we considered um, a lot of generalizations and examples of these foliated field theories. Uh, for example, we found uh, field theories uh, for Nat, Wenji, and Sager's um, hybrid fractal models. And these field theories were quite natural because the 3D particles and strings were captured by this last term here. And we also found some non-abelian fracton examples. And so we discussed two kind of classes of fractal models. I discussed um, the magnetic class in this uh, talk, or at least part of them. And we also discussed um, an electric class. And I'm sorry, I should emphasize, in this paper, the new paper, the magnetic class is much more general than what I talked about in this talk. In the paper, we also found that there was a very interesting duality between these two classes of field theories. Um, so thank you for your time. If you have any questions later, please email me or Potion. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin, for that talk. So our last speaker today.